In today's film study video, we are breaking down the best Madden player of all time. Let's jump into it. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is focused around doing one thing, and that is helping you get better at Madden. We do that through a variety of different ways, and if you want to stay up to date with the latest and greatest tips and strategies that I provide for you guys, what I want to encourage you to do is join our Discord. A link is in the description, so you can click that right there. That's a community of people that are really devoted to getting better, and in my opinion, the best way to get better is to surround yourself with better players, right? That's what's worked for me. So what I want to do here today is I want to break down uh, problem right, and this is actually a throwback. This is the Madden EA uh, Virgin Gaming Challenge, the finals, and I want to break down a little bit about what you're seeing here on screen. This is a little bit of a different style for problem. This is more of a pass heavy uh, style. I believe problem is in the white uh, 49ers. Actually, he might be on the red. Let me double check here and make sure I've got it right. But this was when he was playing uh, Charlie 25K. This was when he was uh, running Bear Under, and he was also running the Philadelphia Eagles playbook. This was Madden 13, right? And so it's interesting because Madden really hasn't changed changed that much. As you see here, yes, he is in the white uniforms. You see there's the A-gap pressure. Now, now, granted, you don't have these A-gap pressures as much anymore, but you have similar style defenses, similar style offenses, and uh, we'll, sh we'll break this down here in just a second. Can't wait to jump into Problem's defense. But Problem in this, you see here, what he's got is he's got these two guys right here that they can he can block them. You see here, he's going to block two, and then he is going to do a lot of user catching. Problem's biggest strength has always been his ability to user catch. And again, he's coming out in this bunch of quads, and he's checking in. And this was actually back when you only had five plays to be able to um, you didn't have custom play, or I mean, you had custom play, but so you didn't have um, audibles. You see here, he's doing that max protect. Here, he hits the corner route to Ted Ginn, and he is off for six. Problem right, actually, in this in this season of Madden, had one of the best passing offenses in the tournament, and he also had this money money two point conversion uh, play here. Basically, what he would do. Um, is he'd come out in the single back spread, and then he would basically throw little high points. You see right there, the little high point catch to uh, Crabtree. Very, very good little route there. And again, that's that theory that we talk about all the time, about having that having that scheme, that X factor. You know, Problem showed up to the tournament with the best two point conversion play in the entire game. And I don't know that very many people even knew about this before the tournament. And you see here, problem just able to to lock in. Now, what you're going to see on defense, and this is what I'm really excited to break down because of how similar it is to the way um, the way Madden 21 and or Madden 20 was played, and also the way Madden 21 will be played. And that is that problem is going to um, do a lot out of this uh, out of this four six bear under style of defense here. Give me one second. Let me adjust this just a little bit here for you. There you go. So as you see, problem, and let's let's replay that real quick. That's that series of plays. So four six bear under. There was a lot that you could do from this specific defense, but one of the things that you could do is you could send the. He had the ability to send. Six, get two free. You see here, there's that gap pressure. Very similar to 3-4 bear and uh, that we have in this year's game. But as you can see, they're getting the pressure, getting the loops in. That's why I was interested. I don't know. When, when I watched Problem, I'm not sure if he ran a whole lot of 3-4 bear this year. But it's a very similar defense to what he was running in uh, the 4-6 uh, bear under. So here you see there's the there's the pressure. And uh, Charlie's able to hit it. Now, well, this is Problem's MO. And this is really, if you watch the defense, what Problem will typically do is he'll run two guys underneath flats here he's got two deep guys to protect deep and then typically what he'll do is he'll use her with this guy and he'll literally take the whole middle of the field away problem has one of the best users in all of madden maybe the best user of all time especially on the defensive side of the ball but here you see here he's actually in the vicinity and just barely messed up on his user and charlie's going to go for a reservation for six now charlie's not going to go for two He's just going to take his one. Now, you see Problem still has that one possession lead. Again, possessions are so critical in Madden. 
and you'll see um, the 4-6 playbook was probably the most popular playbook, but people ran it differently. Some people used the big nickel bear. Some people used the 4-6 bear. Some people used the bear under. Some people used uh, the 3-3-5 three, three, will, right? You know, it was just kind of who, whoever did whatever. But you'll see here Charlie's running more of a coverage-based scheme against problems, D, or problems offense here with these zigs. And you'll notice here, again, he's sending that little loop pressure. But you see there, those zigs as quick reads. Those zigs were so effective for problem. Basically, zigs were so good because they beat man and they beat zone because they were basically like drag routes, essentially. But they were they were just those underneath patterns that would get underneath zones, but they would also beat man to man. And so dual, dual zigs is actually kind of a little bit of a variance of something that I would do off of a mesh concept. And so you see here with these two guys compressed, being so compressed as they are, and here you see there's the dual, dual zigs, and he's just off. Very, very effective. Very, very effective. And looks like he got a holding call. This was kind of a fluky season. And this was really on the cusp. I mean, this was right before Madden really went to more of a competitive, um, you know, the MCS. This was this is a game. This was Virgin Gaming, right? And so here you see he's going to go to the trips. You see he's got Vernon Davis at receiver. Watch this right here. This little, little fit motion didn't fade. And you see he's got the streaks. And if you notice here, this is very similar to what you see in Madden uh, 20. So what he's going to do is he's going to basically try to take this deep blue, right? Brown is in a deep blue. He's going to try to take him away with some kind of underneath route. You see there that hitch. You see how he holds right there? And Problem's able to get that streak out of the backfield to Vernon Davis for a dot. And it looks like Vernon ended up, uh, ended up dropping a touchdown there. So problem in, in theory, right? You want to have speed on the field. You know, speed is speed is the most important thing almost every single year in Madden. And so he's got all these receivers on the field. He's got Vernon Davis. He's got Crabtree. Really, he's using the Niners more so for the defense than for the offense. But you got Kaepernick, mobile quarterback, and he's able to get that streak over the top. And he's got a reservation for six. Again, Charlie is doing a lot of basically man coverage no safety over top watch right here see if Whitner goes over top you see he's got manned up over here but he's got nobody over here so watch what he does with Whitner he's going to start there and you see frame by frame once he chooses to go this direction here with Whitner problem is able to hit him over the top and he's got that reservation for six very good read and then here you see he's going to that two-point conversion play play out of single back doubles flex and I believe this was problem was in the um, I believe he was in the Philadelphia Eagles playbook in Madden 25. But basically what you could do is you could come out in a bubble screen and they would get a certain pass animation. And then you were able to hit that hitch route right in that right in the uh, in that pocket there, a little high point. Now, again, guys, this could be back in Madden 21. Uh, high point passes might be the thing. You know, every year it kind of shifts. Is it a high point? Is it a low point? You know, what is what is the abilities that are going to be effective, right? But um, now you see, and this is what's so big about that two-point conversion play. Problem is up by two possessions now. So if Charlie scores, even if he scores a two-point conversion, he's still going to be down by one possession. So the problem has a two-possession lead, even though they've had the same amount of possessions. That's why going for two is actually a really significant thing, especially if you have a money play like that down in the red zone. And here, Charlie's coming out in this strong close. Uh, Charlie's going to see, runs a lot of this, this uh, pro personnel offense. And in Madden 20, uh, in, or in Madden 13, and even in Madden 25, especially when Madden 25 was on the, this was back on like PS3, right? So, or Xbox 360. So they were able to really do a couple of, a lot of things differently. You know, the game did change significantly when they got on the new engines. But stick work was big, was really big. So here you see strong close. And this is one of the most popular running formations every year. But you hear snap. He's able to slip right in through there and able to get a good gain. You'll see Charlie will kind of stick in that strong close and problem is going to stay in his bear. Now, if you guys are watching this, one of the things I, um, one of the things I wanted to let you know is 
if you are looking to take your game to the next level, I actually created a whole Madden 20 and Madden 21 competitive guide for you. Uh, it's going to be designed to basically be able to not only teach you concepts that you can learn right now in Madden 20, but when Madden 21 comes out, we're going to give you a, a free update to our Madden 21 competitors guide for the first month or first week of the game being out. So those of you that pick it up within that time frame, you're going to be able to get that that ebook. I think we got over 70 pages in there right now. Very very good ebook. As you see here, problem chart. Charlie's running some interesting little routes, interesting combinations here, but Problem is basically sticking in his base defense. You know, Char I think Problem, you know, gave up that seven off of a bad user, and so you'll see here Problem. He's going to come out. He's going to set up that pressure. Charlie's going back into the single back snugs, and this is really what I think he wants to run. And there's you see there's some motion. You see here Problem, again lurk in the middle. There's the pressure. And unfortunate for him, he wasn't able to pick it up. But let me show you right here. So this is this is the four six bear under, right? Let me show you this one more time. Let me go back. So he's running four six bear under, and we're gonna go frame by frame. So you see here, Charlie's trying to pick up this right edge pressure, and doing so, this tackle is gonna come down, and you see here, problems able to get this pressure right off the edge. Now you see on this outside, he's got everybody manned up. He's just running man coverage and lurking, and he's able to lock up. All right, let's check out this next play. Another thing is this is a kind of a classic game, right? This is head-to-head -head on the same screen. So here, Charlie's coming out in doubles, gun doubles. This time, Problem sends a little bit of a passive pressure. This is kind of the A gap. You see Charlie's able to pick it up and get out, get loose with Kaepernick. Let me show you what all is going on behind the scenes on this play real quick. So Charlie is is coming out in doubles. And you see here he's got a zig. He's got a drag. And then I think he's got these two uh, two outside patterns. These two like inside fades. So what problem does just very simply is he's basically in man in, in a little bit of a hybrid coverage manned up the outside guys and took the inside guys away with zone in his lurk charlie's gonna go no huddle here you see problem is really kind of sticking in this cover three from bear under and you're gonna see here now he's gonna send everybody but look this is his patented defense he's gonna have these underneath taken away you see there he's got the hard flats hard flats but you see here this route he can use her with willis and just misses it. I mean, literally just misses the uh, the pick on that route. So problem is very, you know, again, it's that chess match. It's what I talk about all the time uh, in Madden. It's all about your chess match, right? It's all about being able to understand your responsibility to user and take specific types of routes away. If Charlie ran a corner route on that left side, it was probably wide open, right? But Charlie didn't run a corner route, right? He ran the wheel route right into problems user so if i'm charlie and i know problems like the user here i want to base more of my routes over on this side of the field but here you see coming out there's that little option play and a lot of people you know this was actually kind of a meta shift in madden uh, 13 you could actually get really good really sticky run stick with that and so really what charlie's saying is you know i don't want to really pass against you to me i mean that's basically what he's saying with his play call and he's doing a lot of different formations here um but strong close this is really what charlie you know the single back snugs and strong close that's what charlie wants to run and there you see there's the lurk so this is just such a good lurk right here so charlie's thinking is i can get patrick willis to come down on the run because problem likes to blow up the run with his user so he's going to fake the dive and he's going to try to get this little post route in behind it now again down in distance first and 10 so it does make sense that he would want to run the ball here problems running here and you see here he's setting up his run defense watch the motion right here problem reads he sees this receivers are going out on a route and watch immediately backs up immediately backs up now he can either take away vernon davis or circle but he knows his corner out here is going to take away vernon davis so he doesn't have to worry about the corner route. all he's got to worry about is this route right here you see this route's completely taken away and problem's able to time it and get the user pick great play by problem Back on offense now. Problem's got two possession lead with ball in the second corner. He's got to be feeling really, really good. Runs the crossers. 
does some playmaking underneath to take that drag and move him around. And as you see there, messes up the underneath zones. See, Charlie, what he was wanting to do, I think, more so was run a little bit more of a max coverage style of defense. The issue with that, especially in Madden 13, and the issue with it in general, is when you run a lot of max coverage, one of the things that you sacrifice is your quarterback, you know, again, if you don't have good shed D, right, you sacrifice that pressure. If he could sit in that pocket all day, he could play maker wide receivers open. So here you see here a little bit more of a passive pressure. He gets the hurdle animation. Problem has to get the ball out quick. Does check it down to the drag route. So good read there by problem. Problem literally mentally. If he doesn't turn the ball over. Now these games are a little bit longer. But if he doesn't turn the ball over. He's going to be in a good position. Alright. So 16 to 7. Two possession lead with ball. Let's see if he can go down. And again he wants to go down. And he's got to get. He, he doesn't have to get 7. But it's really nice if he gets 7 here. So there's your double zigs. This guy's going on a streak. This guy on the left here. Going to do a little double move, but Charlie is able to get the A-gap. This is big nickel. This was actually a defense I think I, um, I I, talked a lot about this year's game. But you see here this little A-gap pressure that you can get. That slip gets the slip. There's really nothing problem can do. He has to take the sack. See, people talk about being being mad that you can't pick up the pressure out of 3-4 bear. It's like, don't play Madden 13, man. You have people coming right down the A-gap on you. So fourth and nine, problem's gonna go for this. Um, again, problem just doesn't want to give up possession. Again, it's all about possessions, and problem really feels like the more possessions he has, the better he's gonna look. So here he's got his little sluggo user catch up the seam. He's got the streak here. He ends up keeping Crabtree in the block. But he's running two. He's running just all streaks, and he almost picks that up. That was legit run with the QB. So Charlie gets the ball back, first and ten. Now you notice here, problem is on. You know, moving his guys around, doing all that, getting his setup in. Charlie's going to run strong close. You see Problem backed up. Problem, The reason, and I don't like that at all. Actually, don't like what Problem did here. So you notice here, Problem comes in here. He's thinking Crabtree's on a route, so he's trying to go get him, right? He's trying to go get him on a streak. Charlie ends up running the ball, and he's able to get that couple yards. I want to see Problem uh, bail on or um, clamp down on the run on that, especially that quick little spur of the moment. But sometimes, you know, you're in a, you're in a competitive game. And things are happening so, so fast that it's a little bit difficult to do that. All right. So on this play right here, see you got that split two back. Just a quick dive play. Nothing too crazy right there. Charlie's going to come out in this... Uh, Oh, that was a bad. So you see here, this actually is really. Problem almost gets him again. He gets stuck on his D lineman, but he's trying to set up a coverage defense. And you see there, Brooks. Charlie's able just to slip that ball in to Brooks here. So first and 10 inside the 11, or uh, inside the 20, inside the red zone. The big thing here to me is. See how he's moving this guy in? I love this. He's bringing everybody down. Because again, you don't have to defend super, super deep on this. Charlie's looking, and I think Charlie's going to pass here, but I would like to see Charlie run the ball. He's had more success running the ball from this set, but he's going to go ahead and pass. Problem since the pressure drops another pick, and I'd like to see, you know, to me, you click on there, you've got the interception. But, again, this is just sending the pressure, sending the goons. He's got this guy manned up, this guy manned up, and really, you know, you see how they play. So now problem's got him in the second and second and ten. Charlie pretty much has to pass the ball here. Um, it doesn't have to, but you see here he goes to the wide trail. And Charlie's sending everybody out. I mean, this is an issue, right? He's sending five out on a route. Problem's able to get the pressure in. You see here, blocks one running back, but he's got six-man pressure. And Charlie's sending four out on a route, right? Just not, not, not really paying attention to his pass protection. Again, this is something that carries over into Madden 21. You always want to pay attention to your pass protection. Sometimes you need a max protect. Sometimes you don't. Right there, you see you get another sack fumble, and this is where problem defense really starts to put the clamps down. You know, Charlie just doesn't have time for these routes to develop downfield. He's blocking a running back, but problem's in six, and he's getting two free. So Charlie ends up having to settle for three, brings it back to a one possession game. So pressure's kind of back on problem now. 
to uh, to get the get that in. Here's your zig, and again, I love when you see, and Charlie gets a strip fumble, but you see, that's actually a huge momentum swing. But I love problem going back to that zig route. Absolutely love problem going back to the zig route. Again, Charlie's gonna get kind of. I mean, you know, to me, he got lucky there with that strip fumble, but. Anyway, here problem goes back to the fades. The fades against man motioned and fade doesn't work there. He's got that guy on the left, but he just missed him, and he's gonna get out of the pocket with cap. All right, next play. So he goes to this Philly Y seam, and this running back route right there is money. Especially if you get a wide receiver there, you see he likes putting Ted Ginn in that position. Uh, or Vernon Davis with some of his substitutions. Again, this has always been a thing in Madden, right? You want speed on the field. Ted Ginn has speed. So let's get him at running back. Here you got motioned in fades that he could user catch. And you see there, there's the user catch. Phenomenal job. Those motioned in fades really were kind of the meta. Again, those fades are very similar to the type of fades that we run from stick, from the play stick uh, out of our competitor's guide. So if you want to learn how to throw those in even Madden 20, um, or and, and, and ultimately probably at Madden 21, you can. You see here, second 14, but second quarter. So Prom's going to end up getting his three points and go back in, going back up by one possession. Now, Charlie does get balled half here. So Prom should be sending the pressure. I think what he's starting to see is pro literally Charlie cannot, he cannot do much against the blitz. There's, there's not much. You see that draw there. He does hit it. But you'll see here, I mean, it's literally, Prom should be sending the blitz every single play, in my opinion. Because I'm not every single play, but a lot of very, very consistently. And I think you'll see it right here. He starts to send it more and more and more. And he's getting better, better stops every single time. Here it goes to the coverage setup. And Charlie, Charlie makes a good read. And you see here, this, this play right here was legit. So you've got a first and 10. Charlie's liking this pro set, I think, possibly too, because of the fact that A gaps aren't as weren't as good. But you see the edge pressure is just screaming in off the edge, and um, Charlie just can't take the pressure. And this play was this was a big momentum shift, I believe. So problem is going to get. Um, you'll see here at the snap of the ball. So you problem sitting in the double edge pressure. Now, Charlie, you've got a corner route, you've got, a, I think, a post route, or no, you've got out route, basically bench. So you've got these two routes right here, and then you've got these routes over the middle. This wheel route right here just was, or was that a wheel route? Let me back that up just a little bit. But you see there the user pick. So watch Crabtree on this play. See, Crabtree's on a fade. He's on a fade. This guy right here is on a little little cloud, little curl, uh, Underneath flat route problem, knows his responsibility is that seam, jumps the route, and takes it back, and has a pick six. And now you're going to see he should go to that two-point conversion play. He's actually going to – or no, he didn't need to. He didn't need to go to that two-point conversion play. He's going to go up two possessions. And now, again, big momentum shift. And you see problems starting to see, man, when I send six, it is really hard for Charlie. Now he's going this two-back formation, trying to pick up the pressure. You should see both running backs – there's that read option. He's got the pitch there to, to Michael James, but he just doesn't do it. And this was actually a year where you could run uh, a, a read option, triple option style scheme and be pretty effective. Problem's going to go to the coverage setup. There's the wheel route, and Crabtree's able to get it against that zone look. You notice a lot, you know, Problem does have to go to coverage, right? You have to go to coverage some, but at the key moments, Problem is going to send six. Almost every time. Send six. And you see again, um, Frank Gore gets out of there and is going to be able to get a reservation for six in the end zone. So great play there by Charlie. Just basically broke an inside run against that bear. And now problem. Not sure about this one. He comes into this set. Going to eye tight. Just trying to, I think really just trying to Trying to hit the stretch, and I just, you know, his his five wide has been so consistent. I don't know, I don't know about that. See here, third and four, big down. Now he's going to go back into this five wide, and you should see the zig. Yep, the zig wide open, not there. He he playmakers it around, playmakers it around. Great pocket by problem, and then just barely misses that one. So now he's got a fourth and one, kind of kind of a crucial down here, and you see here, crucial down. He's going zigs on both sides. He's got that. 
and he's able to get it with Ka or, uh, Kaepernick. And right there, Charlie just makes a very bad play with his user, rushing Goldson. He should have just sat there and waited, and Problem's able to get a big-time first down, a huge first down in that key moment of the game. So here, going back to that Philly seam, you see Charlie's got these guys backed off. Now, he's going to bring them down in a press animation, Problems flipping, flipping the play, which forces Charlie to basically have to look at the whole other side of the field. And Problem goes to a read option of his own, and Charlie's able to blow it up from that 3-3-5 wheel uh, formation. Now, again, what you should see is these two underneath routes, and then he's got the seams. There it is. There's the streak. There's the fade. Playmaker Crabtree up against the zone. Very, very well done by Problem. Now, again, 417, right? He's up one possession. Now, all Problem has to do, and Problem really, honestly, if you actually watch the game, you know, breaking it down, Charlie broke some big plays, but I really feel like Problem was in control of this game from start to finish. Now, Problem is, is kind of trying to work some clock management here, going down to I-form type pair. This is kind of clocking formation, three-headed rushing attack style, wanting to run the ball, wanting to work the clock a little bit, goes to stretch, and again, like I said, you've seen him run that. You know, you you gotta you you gotta adjust there. Charlie is taking that away every single time. He literally has no answers for your for your five wide, in my opinion. And you see here, there it is again. He's got Ted Ginn. Now again, big pocket. You see, literally Charlie's dropping everybody in coverage, and he's able to scramble out of there with Cap. Able to swerve the spy. So Charlie's answer to problems passing attack is pretty much all out coverage. Now he's going, you see here, third and eight. Now you've got to, you've got to cue yourself, right? He comes out four, six bear under. You've got to think he's bringing the pressure. you got to think you're going to potentially get some pressure here off this edge. So problems adjusting here, going back into that five wide. You should see those two underneath routes. Maybe one guy will block, blocks that right guy, picks up that A-gap pressure, able to delivers the ball to Moss. And problem has a huge play, goes all the way down to the one-yard line and first and goal. And I would, if I'm problem, I'm going to that two-point play. Let's see what he does here. He was just taking the clock down. But here, first and goal, he might just go to QB sneak just to try to pound it in. You see there, no answer. Good D by Charlie. And again, you really do have to all out commit to stop it. Now you see problems going back to the setup, the setup, right? When chips are down, what are you going to call? Can Charlie stop this route? And he really can't, as you can see there. And problem has a reservation for six. You see the frustration on his face. He knows he can't stop it. It's one of those things problem is um coming to the tournament with something that nobody knew about you know and that's kind of one of those elements of, of, of surprise that you have now again problems up two possessions got to be feeling really really good about yourself you're up two possessions he's only got two timeouts you know basically you get the stop here and he almost gets a pick there on that bear under but this is where you see problem should just send every i, I would be sending and he's kind of going in between his passive pressure and his is blitzing but right now, it's basically just don't give up the big play. Keep everything in the middle of the field. Kind of work the clock. And you'll see Problem does a phenomenal job of closing this game out. This is what makes him such a good player. He's able to close. You see there, doesn't drop everybody in coverage every play. Drops in coverage, then he sends six. Drops in coverage, then he sends six. Charlie can't get comfortable because Problem is changing his defenses, right? Too often, and I make the same mistake in competitive games. I don't change it up enough, right? Don't just send six every play. Don't just send seven every play. Send seven, then drop in coverage, then send seven, then drop in coverage. See how problem is weaving in and out of those tendencies? And that is forcing Charlie, forcing him to have to adjust, forcing him to really not be comfortable in the pocket because problem is disrupting his offense just by the chess match of sending all the goons and then not sending them and then sending them. And you see there, Charlie, again, good read, able to hit that middle route. Now problems, again, his big thing is I don't want to give up that big play. So Charlie's going to run the ball. I hate that call by Charlie personally, but if I'm Charlie, I kick a field goal right here. He should go to, he should be going to field goal. He's not going to do it. He's going to go back into his snugs. That's just a, to me, if I'm, if I'm playing, I'm kicking a field goal right there, trying to get an onside kick, you know, kind of trying to give myself a chance to win. But to me, Charlie's literally clocking himself out of this game and um, he's going to go down, but literally he doesn't have, I mean, he just doesn't have the time. You know, he's running He's running a significant amount of clock off for really very little gain. He's got the wheel route wide open. I hate that read. You know, I think he stopped looking to the wheel route because he kind of assumed Problem's going to take it away. Problem does a great job. He fakes there, and then he comes all the way back across here 
and is able to take away that little high point uh, seam or high point wheel route in the uh, Panthers Panthers playbook. You'll see it here again. Bunch, there's the wide trail setup, and, um, and he does he is able to get in there. And I don't know what Prom is doing. I think Prom got caught on somebody. No, he's on Willis. I don't know what he's doing on that side of the field there. To me, that's just bad user. Bad, bad, uh, bad plays. So you'll see here, Charlie's going to go into his depth chart, trying to get this onside kick. But he's got three. He's only got two timeouts. 38 seconds. Snap. It was for that onside kick. And then you see here, Prom's going to be able to recover that very easily. Gets down. And Problem takes the championship so you see here the rest of the plays are just formalities in the victory formation so what do you take away from this right what do you take away from problem rights uh challenge i want you to let me know in the comments or on discord if you can um because this game truly truly guys this game right here very very good madden game very high level and even though it was madden 13 this was one of the games that really set the stage for the power of competitive madden so wanted to break this down this is problems last belt that he won um last big big tournament that he won and so did a great job great scheme did a great uh this was really where he cemented his legacy as being the best player of all time so i wanted to break it down i wanted to talk about why but one of the major reasons that he is the best player of all time is his ability to lock up on defense his ability to to move in and out from key formations and key situations and adjust so let me know in the comments what you think of this video do you like these film studies these breakdowns of these high level players and also if you haven't already go ahead and pick up my madden 20 and madden 21 competitive bundle guide it is in the description we've got so many good reviews on it people have said it's the best 25 dollars that they have spent in a long time so just wanted to shout out that guide for you and then last but not least guys there's going to be some videos that have popped up if you want to continue the conversation about how you get better at madden check out our how to get better how to get ready for madden 21 series that is coming up right now thanks for watching guys